Hello everyone, Anthony Samra from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com, host of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast, which you can find on iTunes or whatever your usual podcast catcher is. Um, today, another video in my series on how to make small talk. Do you really understand people? Or perhaps it would be more accurate to say, do the people around you feel like you really understand them because I think it's one of the greatest gifts that we can give to people is our understanding and it costs nothing. One of the things I kind of learned through the last years of being a counsellor is that even if I had no technical knowledge whatsoever, even if I didn't know anything about anything, anything about healing or any practices to improve your psyche, I would still be able to help people just by turning up as I am and giving them my attention and then demonstrating that I understand them. And I'm going to give you some techniques, some techniques for how to do this, how to make the people around you feel like you understand them. Because when you really get someone, have you ever ha felt that feeling? Like when you say something and someone it feels like someone really gets you like, ah, oh, Oh, it's such a relief. It feels in my body, it feels so relaxing, so natural, so like you've got connection. It feels healing. And it would be a very wonderful thing for you to be able to take out into the world to be able to give people your understanding. And um, it's there's also some technique, that sounds quite deep, but there's also some techniques that you can use just when you're chit-chatting to new people to connect with them faster. So, um, the idea is to listen with the intent to understand and then to demonstrate your understanding. It's a two-step process. The book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey says, seek to understand then to be understood and that is a good word but he doesn't really give a practical tip on how to do that so that's what we're going to try and get at today so one thing that you just should generally get good at is try and listen to what the other person has said at length and paraphrase it in one sentence or a couple of words i'm going to give you some examples in a second so someone comes in and they say Oh, I had such a stressful time at work today. Uh, the boss has got it in for me. He's always looking for reasons to get me in trouble. And you go, wow, it sounds like you're really stressed because your boss is giving you trouble or something. Or, so, or wow, yeah, that sounds really difficult. I, I, how long has this been going on for? You, you just um, mirror the emotion. And um, it's really great to put an emotion word in there. Um, the one that came to mind there is stressful. If you can use a different emotional word from the one that they use, that's even better. So if someone says, uh, oh, I'm so angry about that. I was like, someone comes in, you just go, wow, you sound furious. S stop, <laughs> don't say anything. Give them the space. And what you'll, they'll usually do is they'll go, yeah, I do. And then they'll explain more. What you're doing is you're actually prompting them to go deeper. And just having that one first emotion heard and held will actually act as a prompt for them. They'll already, yeah. And see if you do this three or four times, uh, you get to the point where someone, two to four times, I'd say it usually takes, you just reflect back what you're hearing, gets to the point where the person just kind of relaxes and looks at you expectantly and that's the sign that they're ready to receive information from you because usually if someone's expressing some deep or profound emotion and you just jump in with your advice it really annoys them have you ever noticed this before like you might go oh it's so annoying when people complain about their problems and then they never take my advice well the reason why is because they weren't ready to receive your advice because they they were in a heightened emotional state and what they really needed was your understanding your empathy in order to become receptive to whatever you had to say and you'll find that if you learn to get good at this demonstrating your understanding that people will be a lot more open to whatever you have to say, to whatever advice you may have to give them. And sometimes they'll just figure it out by themselves. So another thing is don't worry about getting it wrong. Because supposing you say, wow, it sounds like you're really angry because X, Y, Z, and they go, 
Well, it's not that I'm angry. I just feel like kind of ashamed and frustrated about that. What you'll find is basically you suggesting something has um, been like a point in a radar. And even though they know what you've said is wrong, they can locate where they actually are. Um, I've got some live viewers, uh, Trisha Stewart, Tricky, as I like to call her, or is giving me the, I don't know if that means she's a Trump supporter. Just kidding. This is uh, for people listening to the podcast. It's the OK sign. Um, Trump always does that. Just kidding. And Ryan Cunningham says, that's great information. Well, if you think it's great, do me a favor. Hit the share button so I can, so that this information will reach more people. Really appreciate the feedback. So here's um, so here's a example from my book, How to Make Small Talk, my ebook, which you can get on Amazon Kindle. Um, I've just broken up with Jared, says the speaker. It was hard to do, but the way he was treating me just got too much to take. Every time I tried to discuss it with him, he would just clam up. The paraphraser says, yeah, it sounds like you tried to talk it out, but he wouldn't be willing to have the conversation. You see the speakers listen to what she said and just picked out the most important point there. And the speaker says, I did. I tried. I feel much better now. I'm moving on. So this is an exactly the kind of thing that you could expect to find when you paraphrase someone go, yeah, that's right. You know, when you really get them, they'll really, really appreciate that and they'll, they'll, they'll get enthusiastic. So I, I did, I tried, I feel much better now. I'm moving on. And the paraphraser says, I guess you'll be looking to the future now. And the speaker says, that's right. So that see when they say that's right, that's like, oh, that's your invitation. So the paraphraser, would then then go on to say something like, uh, I remember when I broke up with my ex, this happened. And the reason why I recommend that um, is because if you share a personal anecdote with someone after they've opened up to you, then um, it stops you from creating a dynamic in your relationship where you're like the helper and they're like the, it can create a sense of an imbalance. Before I was so aware, before I had so much experience behind me, I had the experience of practicing these techniques, which I use as a therapist on people at random parties, whenever, whenever someone got into something deep. And I found that sometimes, even though they had a great experience with me, with me at the time, it kind of got funny afterwards. Like the next time I saw those people, it was like, oh, that guy, like, do I have to speak about something serious now? Because we, um, experienced a profound conversation before. So you don't really want to create a sense of imbalance. So it's great to share your information once they become receptive, not before, because that's just annoying, or share an anecdote from your life, but don't jump in with it too fast. Make sure they're receptive. Otherwise, it looks a little bit like you're trying to hijack the conversation and talk about your thing and uh, when they're not actually done talking about what they're done. So if you think this is useful, please share it. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, so yeah, a, a simple variation of this approach, and again, you can use this when you first meet people, when you're getting to know someone. Someone says, uh, oh, I'm working in advertising. And you go, go, let's go you're working in advertising. <laughs> you know, and they go, yeah, yeah, I am. I've been in a, you know, that saves you falling into the, interview conversation where, oh, how long have you been doing that, blah, 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 blah. If you give them a prompt, then they're likely to go where they want to go with it. So um, you can just really just paraphrase or just say the last thing they said. You know, I came in late and the cat had been sick on the carpet. You came in late and the cat had been sick on the carpet. You came in late and the cat had been sick on the carpet or whatever, you know, <laughs> I don't sound that organic doing it now, but if you were in the situation, you'd be able to sound it. Uh, They'll go, yeah, it was a real mess and whatever, you know. So it's just a prompt. Another great thing is, and this works so well with children, but it's really great for adults as well. Um, just put a name on what you think they're feeling. So uh, if they, oh, I didn't get the job, that sounds disappointing. Oh, that must be so disappointing. Uh, I know you were working up to it for ages. Oh, I just got too much stuff to do at work this week. That sounds really stressful. 
um, how frustrating. You must have been furious. You know, just reflect, but just put a name on their emotion. That is really, really powerful, and people will really like it. And you can do it about positive things as well. I remember when I was teaching piano. Uh, once I had a kid over, and he was he told me. Um, so that at the weekend he was going ice skating. So I just reflected that back. I was like, wow, you really love ice skating. He's like, yeah, I do. And he came alive. So even you can you can reflect back positive emotions as well because there's nothing worse than being excited about something and then people are just like, so flat. Oh. And you're like, oh, why does no one understand me? Why does no one love me? That's what it feels really bad. I hate it. I fucking hate it when I go around. Uh, I, I, <laughs> but it's just there's people in my life that I've known. Like I feel like I can tell them things, and there's just no. They just don't even acknowledge what I'm saying. Um, uh, infuriates me. So I don't think I'm alone in that. It's just a, just to go. Wow, that sounds great. You don't really need to add anything. It's amazing how. Um, you just, wow, that sounds great. Yeah, it's because, you know, it gets people excited. So I do have some other videos on my YouTube channel that you can look out if you want more of this stuff. And uh, one's called, Can Empathy Be a Learned Skill? The other one, oh, this is a good one. Don't bright side me, comma, bro. That's a good, and from my previous channel, uh, empathizing with your kids, some approaches. So if this sounds like some skills that you could really benefit from, then I've got more video resources that are tangential. So thanks very much for joining me on the live stream. If you thought it was useful, the best thing to do is actually open up Facebook Messenger and just say, hey, I saw this really cool video, I think you'd like it. I know sometimes people are a bit shy to save, to send self-help media, but um, don't be because you, you never know, you might open up a new line of conversation with people to go, oh, that's interesting. If I do it, it kind of looks like spam. So I'm kind of relying on you guys to help me spread the message. Uh, one more thing, if you'd like to significantly improve your social skills, I've got a social skills mentoring program. We get together once a week and practice exercises and that's that should be really fun. Um, private message, private message me if you think you'd be interested in joining with other people who'd like to get better at connecting and have more connection in their life. Okay, great. Until next time, be yourself. Well, don't just be yourself, be yourself and love it.com.